Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. I just wanted to do a quick video here on totals inside of Power BI. Now, as I work quite a bit in the Enterprise DNA support forum uh, for members, I, I still see a lot of people getting confused as to totals that they are receiving inside um, of their reports and why, they some, why they're not correct, especially when you start using slightly more advanced logic. I mean, the, actually, the, the, the logic doesn't even need to get that advanced. It's just sometimes totals can be quite confusing. And what I want to show you or, or talk to you about um, briefly here is why they calculate as they, as they do and how you can then get around some of these total issues you're probably experiencing. Okay, so what I've set up here is a pretty simple example. I've got my customers and I've got a calculation for total revenue. I've also done a calculation for revenue last year, okay? So very, very simple count. I've just used the date hand function to go and work out what the sales were for last year. So current context is 2018, so that's revenue for 2018. This is revenue for 2017. Then I wanted to create another column here, and I wanted to see what was the min revenue year okay so what was the revenue for the min um for what was the lowest out of both of these years 2018 and 2017 or alternatively you know you can click through here and go what was the minimum between 2017 and 2016 okay but let's just keep it on 2018 for now now this is the formula that i use for that okay so you'll see here that i've got um very simple formula just min which makes sense, right? If you worked in Excel, this is what you'd do. Okay, so I'm just gone, okay, for every single row, I want the min of my total revenue, and then, or, and also my, uh, the min of my, uh, you know, including my revenue last year. Okay, so then I press enter. Now, if you work down this list, right, if you work down this list in your table, you will find that everything works out as it should, okay, which is great, until you get to the last result. Okay, until you get to the total. This and this this is the total up here as well. Now, the reason it, the totals are incorrect in this case, okay, is because well, it, it, you, first of all, first of all, I want to add you you have to recognise what total do you actually want, okay? Because sometimes this might be the total that you want, but in a lot of cases it probably isn't. Okay, so I've recognized here, this is, this is not what I want. I want the total of all of these values within this particular column, right? Now, what's happening here in the total, you have to um, recognize the total is calculating, um, has no context, okay? So every single row inside of here has context of a customer name, okay? But in the total, there's nothing, okay? So all it's looking at for when the formula is like that, it's saying, okay, well, what's the min of this total um, and, and, the, and, and this total? And that's why we're getting the 148 million. It doesn't understand that you want to actually count up every individual row here and the and with, with the context applied, okay? Now, this is where iterating functions really come into their own, okay, and why you really have to give a good understanding of what they actually do. Okay, so let's go and have a look at the correct formula here, okay? So with this iterating function, right, we can work through virtually a table. I've just used, I've just created one with summarize here, summarize customer's customer name. And then at every single row in that, uh, in this particular um, table, this virtual table, I'm then gonna go do the min. I'm gonna go min revenue and revenue last year. Now the thing about iterating functions is all of all of this all of this calculation at every single row happens virtually. Okay, it all happens virtually, and it goes row by row by row by row by row, saves that that calculation into memory or that that result into memory, and then it goes and does this sum at the end of all of those virtual results that have been saved into memory. Okay, so it takes into account every single row here. It doesn't. It doesn't just say, okay, there's no context for this particular result now, so I'm going to go and grab the, um, the just the min of this and this result. It actually understands that there is um, some calculations but that have been iterated through at every single row, and then it goes and sums up just those particular calculations. Okay, and this is a really key concept just generally in Power BI around um, around iterating functions, right? It's it's understanding how these operate. 
uh, at every single row to then give you, you know, your ultimate result at every single row, but also the results and your totals. Okay. So hopefully, hopefully this made it quite clear. I, I've I've been meaning to do this um, this particular tutorial a bit uh, for a while now, just because I've seen a number of requests 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 around it. So hopefully, if you're getting stuck on a total in Power BI or an incorrect total in Power BI, you can um, have a play around with techniques like this, right, and um, see if you can uh, work you know work in some the, some parameters that uh, make sense, and then retrieve the um, retrieve the the value that you're looking for okay um, if you got a lot out of this one and um, it helped you out definitely throw the video a like really appreciate it as always and uh, definitely subscribe to enterprise DNA TV lots of great content coming out to you very soon okay all the best